My name is Steve Hillis, and this is the second in a series of tapes where we're going to be looking at interactionism, a major form of microsociology. In this particular video, we're going to look a lot more at symbols, social meaning, and social definition, some of the core concepts uh, emphasized by almost all interactionists, especially symbolic interactions. Symbols, what do we mean? Well, a symbol is something that stands for something else. If you're wearing a Purdue t-shirt, well, that stands for the university. It suggests that you're perhaps a student or you're a fan, you root for the boilers. Likewise, we use a variety of different kinds of symbols and signs to stand for other things. Uh, stop signs, stop lights, it doesn't have to have words. It could be pictures, it could even be colors. But I'm going to focus here a little more on written symbols, at least just for a moment. Clearly, our words, whether written or spoken, are classic examples of linguistic symbols. What is an apple? Well, it's something that we, well, it's something we eat, a crunchy, nice, juicy fruit. Why do we use that particular word, those particular letters, that particular sound to refer to those particular things? Well, we just made it up. There's no intrinsic objective or necessary connection between the symbols we use and the things that they refer to. That's certainly true with words. We make words up, we create, we generate language, and we uh, basically teach it to each other. We learn it from other people. Language is something that human beings create. It's a social product, a social institution, and it's something that not just socially created and learned, it's something that we use socially to communicate with each other and also to think in terms of. Take a step back. I just threw a lot at you. The idea is, is human beings use symbols, including language symbols or linguistic symbols to talk to each other, to communicate with each other, to coordinate our behavior, to interpret, perceive what we're doing, to understand what other people want us to do, to understand what they're going to do next, to understand what they'll do if you do one thing or another. It allows us basically to coordinate our activity and create very complex patterns of uh, social activity, to play games together, to work together, uh, to uh, 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 even to argue or fight with one another in many cases involves quite a bit of coordination and mutual understanding. How do we generate and maintain mutual understanding? Well, we communicate using gestures, using symbols, using language. Now, language is something that is a classic example of symbols, but it's not the only one. I already talked about stop signs, stop lights, and so forth. Examples of, well, we'll call them signs. Physical objects that also have symbolic content. Also, George Herbert Mead, one of the founding fathers of interactionism, argued that in many respects, behavior itself is symbolic. We imbue social behavior with all sorts of meaning. In this case, meaning relating to behavior. Here's why I'm doing this. Here's what I expect you to do. Think about it in the simplest term, gestures. What is a hand wave? Well, it's a greeting. Why? Because we made it up. How do you know that? You watched other people do it. You, uh, uh, you experimented, you practiced, other people responded when you behaved that way. You learned it by interacting with other people. Passed from generation to generation, from person to person. Created socially, passed down uh, socially, used socially. In a different time, in a different culture, a hand wave like that might be a death threat or a, a basically a, a call for help. The actual meaning of particular gestures depends on the particular group, the culture. Once again, symbols have no intrinsic meaning. They're simply cultural artifacts, something that we create. Of course, we use all sorts of symbols. The middle finger, why is that an insult? Why is the bird an insult? Flipping someone the bird. Well, again, because we made it up. The same, why is a kiss a kiss? Well, for that matter, let's take a step back. What does a kiss mean? A kiss can mean different things depending on the context, depending on the situation, who's kissing who, where they're kissing them, how they're kissing them. A kiss can be obviously a romantic or sexual gesture, or it can be a sign of respect, uh, like when you give your grandmother a peck on the cheek, or maybe when you kiss someone's hand uh, because they're a superior to you. It could be a way of indicating some mission or uh, that, you, that they have greater authority or power than you do. Or you could even use a kiss as a death threat. Uh, I don't claim this is actually true, but I've seen a lot of old bad uh, 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 cop and crime movies uh, where they had the kiss of death. A mafia guy would kiss another man on the lips. 
basically as a public death threat, kissing them, saying, well, you are so dead. Now, again, I don't claim that that was a real or actual mafia uh, 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 you know, symbol. I don't personally know. But it's still a classic example of how, uh, how kisses might be used to communicate things that are very different than how we typically think of kisses. Kissing has no intrinsic meaning. It's given meaning by the groups of people who use, create kissing, and use kissing. And over time, they can, well, uh, change the meaning of kissing and transform it and use it in different novel ways. However they use it, whether that meaning changes or whether it stays the same over time, it's also critical to remember that we use things like gestures, kisses, language, symbols, signs, in an in a, in a attempt to basically do things together, to understand each other, to understand what other people expect or want from us. This allows us to influence each other. It also allows us to do complex activities with other people that would be impossible. More on that in a little bit. But one other point before I leave symbols. I need to point out that in order for symbols to work as a social mechanism, for us to understand each other and do things together. We have to have shared meaning. Shared meaning is assigning the same expectations, the same beliefs, to the same symbols. I can talk about an apple to you because you mean the same thing by apple as I do. And I can talk about kissing because you know what kissing is, because you have the same expectations, attitudes, beliefs, and knowledge of kissing that I do, more or less. We're talking about the same thing. As a result, we can communicate, we coordinate, you can listen to this lecture. I can tell jokes about kissing. You can watch kissing in movies and understand it, or you can kiss yourself. <laughs> Someone else. At any rate, the point is, is that it is only because of shared social meaning that you have the under, uh, ability to understand what I'm talking about or to do things with other people, communicate things with other people. That all relies on the idea that you're more or less on the same wavelength, using the same symbols to refer to the same behavior, the same activities, the same objects. That's what's critical. It's not just having language or symbols. And it's not just that these language or these symbols have meaning. They have to have this same meaning for people to be able to work together and use them to create the social world, to do things together, to create social activity.